This is the breathtakingly beautiful Mackerel Beach, about an hour north of Sydney. It is one of the most stunning locations in Australia. But of course, living here takes a certain level of commitment. Building here is a whole nother level, not just on the owner's behalf, but on the architects as well. And what you're about to see is a beautiful reflection of not just that commitment, but the incredible surroundings that it sits in. Rob, I've got to say, I think this is the most beautiful point of view of pit water that I've ever seen. And I suppose one of the ideas was to, to draw the outside in. Yeah, and I'd imagine this would be one of the many tools that you've got in your bag of tricks to do that here in this dwelling because it is just so breathtaking, isn't it? Well, it is a box of tricks. Yes. You know, it's a very small little box yes. but with a big opening yes. to the view. And did the client call you a magician? Oh, I wish, I wish, <laughs> I wish. And this is quite a lovely installation as well. Well, you know, when you're a ceramicist, you've got to find somewhere to put your stuff. Yes. And Louise is a ceramicist, and we just thought, well, why not make a, a wall of display? And it's really quite a small footprint for a house, yep. but it's a, a very high ceiling. Yep. And that makes the difference. It's a modest house, which, which has, uh, you know, basically living in all in one space. Yes. Um, You've got the kitchen, the living, and the dining, yep. uh, all with a view. And within those, this volume, you can also build, you know, this little loft bedroom, tuck mm. the bathroom, and sort of build a box within a box. That's a fun space. Can it, I take a, a It's a great view up yeah. there. It's an even better view. <laughs> this is fantastic. The idea is every, every space in this house takes advantage of this dramatic view. I tell you what, the kids would just love getting up and down this ladder, right? It appeals to people's adventurous spirit. And you've, you've used a lot of Australian woods. Is this spotted gum or black It is spotted gum, yeah. yep. Uh, with birch ply ply on the yep. walls, yep. which give it you know, that warmth and, and, and create us what, I suppose, a, a, a lightness inside. Yeah. They've got a lot of these old mid-century modern pieces, which I love. I mean, look at that Hans Wegner. I know, I know. And, and, the, and the Featherston chair yes. and everything. And I think, you know, it, it, it highlights their, the client's character yes. and the client's personal sort of uh, delight in beautiful pieces. Yes. And the house sort of matches that. What is it that, uh, that drew you to working with ceramics to begin with? I don't... I can't even remember why, but I always, as a young child, wanted to learn the wheel. So it must be an intriguing place to work and certainly really inspiring. It is, it is. And I photograph a lot of things on the beach or on the rocks down there. So it's yeah. become your outdoor studio. Yeah, yeah, it has. It's very inspiring. I'm in love with some of your pieces of furniture as well. Where did you collect all these things from? Uh, we inherited a lot of furniture from Nick's parents. Yes. This dining set is one of our favourites. Yes. The Featherston we purchased. Yep. Uh, but the other two chairs were Nick's grandfather's. Wow. Well, look, hats off to you for retaining some of that family heritage because I think it's really helped complete the story of the house. And then with your creativity and the ceramics and everything thrown in, there's, there's so many stories here. Well, the Hart House is a wonderful collaboration between architect, owner, and nature itself. And I think Rob's skill and submission to this incredible view has created the most magnificent backdrop for Nick and Louise's ceramics and lifelong collection of mid-century modern furniture. And I couldn't think of a better place to be inspired. This project started with this, but it's not just about where you are, it's what you do with it. So Luke, this was a modest family home. Yeah, designed for a family of five on a 190 square metre footprint. Um, so it was all about connecting to the outside and we were exploring um, this conventional stud framing house and how we could build a lightweight house um, on a modest budget. So you took standard size materials off the shelf? So it's all set out on um, CFC sheet sizing and timber framing coat. It was just framing these these elements and these materials and getting the most out of them we could and using um, local tradesmen to do that. So this is a screen or, or a buffer? Yes it, it is of sorts and because it's a, a batten screen we weren't so sure 
uh, initially because of the sound traveling up and from the upstairs to the downstairs but in fact it's turned out to be fantastic because I've got a lot of small children and they, they don't have a chance to get into any mischief without me hearing them. But with these we can open them if you push on the brass okay. and slide them open. Um, and what an extraordinary view. Yeah it's beautiful we love it and if I'm lucky I get to see some whales. So the table and the floors and the stairs and the flooring upstairs. Yeah, they're all recycled Oregon. It's absolutely beautiful and it's just great to use a recycled product that you know, has had a history. And has a, has a kind of industrial past. It does, it does. So in fact, the design in general has a bit of an, an industrial feel, which we really like. What I really enjoy is being able to like, open up the house and have that real like, indoor, outdoor experience. Nestled between the hills and the sea, we are looking at an exceptional home built on the sand dunes on the edge of McLaren Vale Winery. The thing that I really like about this site is the sand dune, the form of the dune with the, the valley in the middle and then the two peaks. I didn't want to destroy that. So that's why we've got these two simple rust-clad boxes that sort of aren't competing with the landscape. They're just floating above it, letting the dunes and the vegetation really dominate. We wanted to make the most of the environment. We've got beautiful winter sun now, streaming right across this room. So with the double glazing on the three sides, very little artificial warming needed. In the summer, we've got the terraces on the east side and the west side so that they can open up the house, move out to these areas. Wherever the wind's blowing, you can be on the other side. Or if you want the cooling bridge, you can be there. So there's so many options from where you can be. And then we go across the bridge, Barry and Robin, each have their own studios, so they're walking across this bridge to work. What a fantastic way to go to work with these spectacular views. So tell me, Barry, what do you like about your house? Well, what's not to like? I like the fact that it's working really well environmentally and also the fact that we're revegetating these sand hills. When you get up in the morning and you're surrounded by the sky, the earth, the sea, the bush, what could you want? This project demonstrates what can be achieved with a modest budget and innovative design thinking. It's good to see the bush regenerating and houses going up after those terrible fires roared through here. I'm really looking forward to seeing this project because it's very much part of that story. So where was the original house, Stu? It was um, a couple of hundred metres back up on the hill back. And on the day of the fire, actually, it was quite radical. All of those hills over there behind us were completely alight. And, you know, the family took everything that they could and went down to the, ran down to that little rocky point over there. Okay. And looked back as the fire just tore through and, and burnt everything in its sight, including the house. How terrifying. It's interesting because in the aftermath, you know, there was this opportunity though, because the family used to look from their old house towards the point and often wonder, oh, it would be great if we were further out towards the water and what could we do out there? And now we have this. What a wild sight. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing. And like this fire that was sitting around Beck, it's just a lovely little piece of the fire, you know, the, the force, if you like, that transformed the site. Yeah, that's really symbolic. So the design time was around 11 months, including all the permits and, and drawings and yeah, so great. forth. Yeah, and what about construction? It was about eight months. The modular way of building certainly sped some parts of it up, but then there's quite a bit of craftsmanship in the building in terms of getting all these elements to, to fit together and be really precise. The engineer did an amazing job. It is quite complex, it, it, it looks simple, but there's complexity in the engineering to get these horizontal planes floating and getting these precast panels in exactly the right position to hold them up, so yeah. it's quite critical. The building itself was about two things. It was firstly about recovery and secondly about doing something new. 
And so in terms of that recovery, I wanted to give to the client something that was really peaceful. And that's why we actually pushed the building Closer. as far out yeah, as we to could the to the water so we could actually hear the waves and, and the wind. And the wind. <laughs> As an architect, I think this is a great project. The owners have been decisive and confident. They engaged an experienced architect and trusted him to deliver their brief. And this is the result.